Libya Prime Minister Al Mahmoudi and the head of Libyan TV just announced this. They are announcing they are currently in Tunisia. Now, no word if Muammar Gaddafi is there as well. Libyan rebels took control of Tripoli overnight, but Gaddafi forces are not giving up without a fight. So how should the United States now handle the situation moving forward? And what about Syria? Tevi Troy is senior fellow at the Hudson Institute and a former deputy secretary of health and human services under President George W. Bush. And today he's out in Seattle. Good morning to you. Thanks for having me. Well, what do you think about what's going on over in, in uh, Libya right now? Well, obviously, it's a good thing that the rebels have uh, displaced Gaddafi. He's been there too long, since the 1970s, in fact, right. and was, had been cruel to his people. But there are a couple of things we don't know going forward. First of all, where is Gaddafi, as you've said, is the million-dollar question. Second of all, what are the rebels going to be like when they, when, when they take over? Will that be a pro-U.S. regime? Will it be a liberal democracy, which is what we're hoping for? But the bigger, most overarching question is what's going to happen in the region, and how is the Obama administration approaching this? It seems to me that they kind of have a herky-jerky, inconsistent approach. Why did they move to get rid of Gaddafi? A little slow, but still, to be sure, it's a victory in the... They moved to get rid of him. Then why have they said that they won't intervene in Syria, where mm -hmm. Assad is, is slaughtering his people? Why did they not back the Green Revolution in Iran, but they dropped Mubarak, who had been a U.S. ally for many decades, even though he was a dictator? And right. why did they drop him so quickly? So there's no consistency, I see. Right, Tevi. And I'll tell you what, it's an extremely hard situation to figure out. But another message that Arab dictators might take from that is, whatever you do, don't give up your nuclear weapons. Because if they had nuclear weapons, we wouldn't have been supporting the rebels, and we would have been their air cover and denying them air cover, correct? Well, that's, that's true. But remember, that was a big U.S. victory when Gaddafi gave up his nuclear weapons. And the reason he did it was because of the threat of force in Iraq. So the, the, the sense of uh, U.S. forces that are, are willing to um, intervene when appropriate, but also the, the sense that the U.S. is for democracy and for freedom. Remember, under President Bush, that was a consistent approach. We're pro-democracy. He listened to um, Natan Sharansky, who wrote his book on democracy, and recognized that even if there are short-term problems Problems with democracy overall and in the long run democracy is a good thing and worth pursuing and that was a consistent principle sure so Tevi what you're saying is this president needs a plan I think we heard that about jobs <laughs> He, he does need a plan. He needs consistency, not just for the American people to know what his plans are, but what our, our allies need to know, mm -hmm. how our, we're going to approach these things, and our, our enemies also. You need to know what to expect from the U.S. The U.S. can't just be some right. kind of unpredictable tiger in this situation. A couple of days ago, we asked Assad to step aside. Will it be a good next step? Well, um, for example, we, we did ask Assad to step aside, but it was way too long. He took forever, and again, while he was slaughtering his people. In addition to that, um, we've said we're absolutely not going to intervene. Now, I'm not advocating intervention in Syria, but keeping that option open can make him sweat a little bit more. All right. Uh, Tevi Troy, joining us today from Seattle. Thank you, sir. Thanks. All right. Very fluid. Meanwhile.